Salama Benazulu Benako. I hope you enjoy the content I present and the teachings on this channel. If that is you, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications and like and share the videos you love. You can also support me on Patreon and get access to exclusive content and teachings. And as a partner, you will join my inner circle, Kongolo. I am Nabi Kefas, Matondo, thank you, and Zambi Abenisa. I have some questions based on yes. everything you have shared. Yeah, and once again, it went so fast and you had so much profound knowledge that you shared. Um, so I wasn't able to write all the right questions down that I wanted to because I had to listen. <laughs> I had yes. to follow you along. <laughs> uh, but let's go. Let's let's. So my first questions are based on the first part, yeah, the theological um, kinship between Kemet and Congo. Yes? Now, yes. You open to say that monotheism is the existence of one supreme being yeah, and a hierarchy of divinities. Now, in Christianity, yes. we were taught uh, that monotheism is just the existence of one God who is the creator, who is the supreme one. Yes, is actually everything you need. So when you pray, you are praying to that one God. Yes, when you worship, you are worshiping to the to that one God, and He is also, uh, you know, the the Creator, the Savior, the Holy Spirit, etc. The Logos, they are all one. Now, you you have said that monotheism is actually different. Yes, actually different, and the uh, uh, polytheism is not really understood by the Europeans as they were teaching their religions to the Africans. Uh, let me say first. Yeah, go ahead. Let me say first stress this. At the start, the West were the Western people were polytheistic. Mm -hmm. they, they never knew about the existence of one God. Mm -hmm. But those who came to Egypt, they have learned that there is only one God. They did learn it in Egypt. However, they were never taught the true nature of the Egyptian theism. The Egyptian was keeping adamantly that knowledge from the foreigners. So that the monotheism which is found in the West is the monotheism that was started by Akhenaten. Akhenaten. Yes. Akhenaten, mm -hmm. Akhenaten, in his heresy, decided to found a religion. And in that religion, the Most High is the creator. So that was, that was mm -hmm. the monotheism that was copied by the Greeks, by the Greek, mm -hmm. and by the Romans. And it became the monotheism of Islam and the monotheism of Christianity. Now, that monotheism is wrong. Why? You have got to ask yourself the question. Where does creation occurs? occur? If creation occurs in God, that means that at the moment of creation, God changes because something new appears in him which was not there now if god changes there must be a principle of his mutability and that principle must be greater than god which is impossible because god is conceived as the greatest being now maybe creation happened outside of god but if creation happens outside of god 
then if you take God, you add creation, you have an entity which is greater than God, which is also impossible. So in both ways, the existence of a most high God who is, who, who is also the creator of the temporal universe is a logical impossibility. The philosophers know this. The theologians know this. They all know it, right? But religion was for them a means of domination of, of African people and other people. So they didn't have something they can, something other they can, they can teach. And they needed that notion. So the true monotheism is the monotheism taught by the Egyptian. The monotheism that we teach, which is that there is a most high God who is transcendent, who is enthroned above lower divinity that is manifestation. Now, this is not polytheism. Polytheism is the existence of many independent gods, which is not the case in Africa. Mbumbaloa is not an independent god from, from um, Zambian Pungutulendo. No, he's, he's a child of Zambian Pungutulendo. So Zambian Pungutulendo is unique in his nature. He's the mm -hmm. only god who is transcendent. He is infinite in his individuality. He is infinite in the individuality of the creator's potential and effective he includes. So he is absolutely infinite. Hmm. Okay. So I can, we can conclude that monotheism, which is practice, um, that lets me say the concept of monotheism, came from the Egyptian, uh, ancient Egyptians. Yes. Yeah? And yes. the monotheism, which the European practice, starting with the Greek who came in to be educated in Kemet, they adopted yes. the monotheism, which was created by Akhenaten. Yes. So they were as students under the priesthood of Akhenaten's teachings. Yeah. When, when they invaded Egypt, when they, because first time they were coming as students. Yes. So as, as students, they, were, they, were, they, they, they came to, to know that there is only one God here, but mm -hmm. they didn't have the, the, the exact definition of that. Later, they invaded Egypt. And when they invaded Egypt, yes. yes. They found the monotheism of Akhenaten, which is mm -hmm. which, which which was taught to them by Manetho. I think Manetho used that schema in order for them not to discover true religion. Why I stand for this? Mm -hmm. Because Manetho. they found him as priest of Egypt. They told him to, to, to create a religion for them. Instead of teaching them the mm -hmm. true religion of Egypt. He told them he founded a religion for them, which is based on the worship of a bull, the, the, of the bull Apis. The Wait Apis a minute. The, the, so you know, see? The Grecians. So, so you see? The yeah, Grecians the Grecian. wanted uh, Maneto to the found a religion for them. For them, yes. For them. But he said instead, Yes, but instead of showing them the true religion of his ancestor, Manetho found a new religion based on the cult of the bull that he showed them. So he diverted them completely from true religion. Mm -hmm. Based on the cult of a bull. Yes. Oh. Okay, you, you are messing us up, uh, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> So so, so, oh. so so you see, so it was it was it, it was something a demand mm. among the Egyptian that our religion 
who must not be told to white people. And that was we adopted. So we don't have to initiate this, white people. This reminds me of a scripture in the book of Deuteronomy 20, 29, verse 29, yes. that says the, the secret of the Most High. Eh? Uh, no, let me just go there to, to quote it as it is written. Uh, 29. Yes, it says the following, the secret things, secret things, sec another word for secret is mysteries. The secret things yeah. belongs unto our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. So it's like uh, the Egyptians, uh, so the ancient ancestors, they knew that the true religion, the mysteries as they were revealed is only for them and their children. So yes, they did not everything they people. could not to teach the foreigners, the Greek and the Romans who were coming in, the mysteries of the fathers. So is that correct? The only, so the only theism that the Greek took was well, the theism of Akhenaten mm -hmm. and the theism about, that was taught to them by Manetho, Manetho. the worship of the bull. Okay. Okay. So the, the true religion, the true mysteries is still hidden. And it is with... Uh... It, is, it, is, it is still hidden. It is there in the Bible, mm -hmm. but they don't have the key to discover it. Yeah. We do have the key. We, so have we are not telling to people here, for example, mm -hmm. you, you have, a, you have a, a very good ex example in the Bible, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which are in heavens. Many people recite that prayer without knowing that mm -hmm. the word heaven is in plural. And then they don't ask them themselves the question, why are we to worship a father, to, to address our prayer to the Father which are in heavens and not to the Father which are in heaven? The answer is that the God taught by Jesus is a transcendent one, the God of Egypt, a mm. transcendent mm. God. And because he is transcendent, prayer must be addressed to the lower divinities, even to ancestors. And you mentioned, you did mention that the word father is in plural, mean, it means mm -hmm. ancestor. Yeah. So, so you see, the, the mystery is there that they don't have the key to open it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the key to decode the ancient, the ancient mysteries is given to us. Yes, and yes. it reminds me yes. of a scripture that Jesus said, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's very exact. It's given to you to know the mystery yeah. of the kingdom Not of heaven. Not to other people. Not to other people. Not to all nations, but to a specific group of people, exactly as it was in ancient Egypt, that the yes. true religion was only for the people and their children. It is amazing. Now, yeah, I, I love I, I, I love the statement you made. God is immutable, indivisible, and transcendent. And there is a unity of the father, mother, and the child, which is the logos. And the logos, yes. the power of the reflection in the child of God. Yes, the power, the power of the reflection of the wholeness of God yes, in the child. Of the fullness of God. Of God in the child. Now, there, there are two things here. So, so the Bible is actually a code, yeah? a code that has hidden 
the true religion in its pages. Like Kimbangu said, yeah, by reading the Bible, you will catch the thief with the object which he stole. Yeah. When we go to the book of Genesis, for example, during creation, uh, in Genesis 2, verse 26, it says um, the gods, right? Elohim is gods, made a declaration. Let us make men into our image. Of yeah. Us. And there are two words there. One is demut and the other is tselem. But tselem in its definition comes from a root word that means to shadow. Yes, to, sh mm -hmm. to shadow. So in that, I can see the logos that works in the child of God, which is the reflection yeah. of the fullness. Yes. The reflection oh, of the fullness of God. Now, that reflection can also be understood as a shadow, as we've seen mm -hmm. in Lexicon Strong's, a shadow which is called the image or likeness. <clears throat> yes. As, you, as one stands in the mirror, he sees his reflection. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> Kim, Kim, Kim. My goodness. There's so much wealth in. Yeah, in, in what you said and what you teach, there's so much to, to gain from it. And another thing you said is that reality is always spiritual and never physical. Mm -hmm. so the mm -hmm. real human, the real moon <clears throat> is the spiritual one. And this body is just a temporal appearance. Let, let me emphasize something here. Mm -hmm. This is a demonstration we made through deduction. That is, it is true because in a deduction where, where the premises are true, the conclusion cannot not be true. Now, the conclusion we have reached is that reality is spiritual, which means that our science, which science is based on the existence of spirit, is a true science. The white people, the white people didn't, didn't, didn't understand this science because they were basing themselves from the supposition that reality is material. Mm -hmm. Now, they are unable to demonstrate to us that reality is material mm -hmm. while we are now able to prove that reality is spiritual because we are doing through the chemical cosmological argument so we have ground now to defend the traditional science someone sent me a video and in that video I have seen a practitioner, a traditional African practitioner, opening the skull of someone. So we knew how to open the skull. We knew how to open the belly and take the baby. We knew all of this. How we're medicine were well in advance in comparison to the medicine of the West. But hmm. the problem is how our medicine was, were, was based on, on the fact that reality is spiritual. And that fact could not be understood by the white people. And we didn't have the tool to prove this. Now we do have. So it is an opportunity for our politicians mm -hmm. to defend our technology, to defend our science. Mm -hmm. Acupuncture, which is a technology of the Chinese, cannot be explained by the anatomy of the West. But the Chinese went to the WHO, to the World Health Organization, and they said, this is scientific according to ours. And they explained this 
And today, acupuncture is accepted for more than 50 diseases. Why should not we also take this opportunity and defend our science, defend our technology, which is still well in advance com in comparison to the Western technology? We have to do this, and we have the tools to do this. Mm. Hallelujah, Ingeta. We have. <clears throat> now, existence, you spoke about the existence of many parallel universes, yes? And the existence of those multiple parallel universes imply uh, multiple creators, yeah, which are yes. called in the plural baloa. Mm -hmm. uh, how can we understand this? So we are living in one plane of reality, in universe, and... Let, let me first start with Hebrew. Hebrew 12, chapter 23. We read there, the firstborn children inscribed in the heavens. Now, we know that in one universe, there must be only one firstborn, which is which is the creator. But here they speak about the first born and the, the expression first born is in plural, le premier né in French, premier né in plural. So if we have many first borns, mm -hmm. it means that we have many creator, each is first born in his universe. In fact, each time you sleep and you dream, you go in another universe. Mm -hmm. You go in the dimension of other universities. And you come back. When you awake, you come back to this one. So there are many parallel universes, which, is, which are parallel to ours, which, which are created by other laws different from Howers, which is Bumba Loa. So, and this was taught by the Egyptian with this, this is known by the Congo people. So the realm of dreams is a parallel universe. Yes, the, 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 the realm of dream can be you going higher in this universe, mm -hmm or you going to other parallel universes. But how do we know when you are going through those, to those other universes when you sleep? Because we also we experience some, some unsettled dreams, you know, like nightmares. We, we, don't, we don't know this when we dream. But we do know this from the ancient, from the Egyptian, who mm -hmm. speaks about who speaks about those dimension. Yes. But when you dream, when you dream, you cannot know, and many things seem uh, seems unstable. They, you, you know, why they seem unstable? Because you go to higher dimension. If you take a baby. Uh, someone, a, a baby who is three years old, you carry him in a laboratory, a chemist, a, chem, a laboratory of chemists, of, of uh, chemistry. All he sees there, those bubbles and tubes, for him, they are only toys. Because he is in a higher dimension than the one in which he abides. That's what happened in some of our dreams. Okay. We see them, we see them unstable because they are higher di dimension mm -hmm. that we cannot interpret. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <clears throat> so sleep, as you enter into the realm of dreams, uh, you can find yourself in a parallel universe. Uh, going higher, but if your knowledge is not compatible with that higher universe, you won't be able to understand the things you're seeing and witnessing. That, that means also that through initiation, 
Mm-hmm. We should happen to the to the point where we master our souls, so that when we go to those dimension, we will be conscious and we will carry the knowledge from there to here. Mm-hmm. We have to reach. You have to reach that point. And the Egyptian were very intelligent because their priests reached mm-hmm. those points. Mm-hmm. And this we can read in the books such as the tablets of uh, Hermes, which is a reality, the tablet of thought. Mm-hmm. The tablet of thoughts. Yes. Okay, so true, the knowledge of science comes from the spiritual realm. Yes, the true knowledge of science comes from the spiritual realm, mm-hmm. not from this realm. And you, I, I, you have this, when you ask a tough question to, to an elder here in Africa, he will tell you, let me dream, let me sleep, let the head have a dream. Mm-hmm, exactly. And that's what the problem so, so he means that he will sleep, go higher, and the ancestors will reveal to him the science, mm-hmm. and he will give it to you. Mm-hmm. So true science is an intuitive one. We lose a lot of time by trying to do science like the Western people do. I'll tell you, I'll give you a testimony. Um, I have a PhD in theology, and especially in apologetics. And when I was working for my PhD degree, I realized that I lost a lot of time and it remained only two months for me to write my thesis. I wrote my thesis in three weeks. I got an A, that is 95% of the point. That thesis was published by, the, by Armatan in Paris. By thesis was reviewed by by a, a journal, a scientific journal of the University of Toulouse in France. That means it kept the attention of the academic community. But I wrote it in three weeks. How could I write a thesis in three weeks? The answer is that I was mostly relying on my intuition rather than on my on my head. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> powerful in three weeks okay um let me see so we have the most high yeah, as you said the yes. most high who is immutable indivisible transcended and then we have uh, the baloa who are the creators yes of the um, yeah, multiple universes, parallel universes. And we have Bumba Loa, who is the creator of this universe, which we yes. are in. Yeah? And yes. then followed Pinanza, who mm-hmm. is who can be understood as the governor, but also the completeness. The god of order, god, god of order and judge. And the judge, yes. Eh, who inhabits the completeness or mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Say the right. completeness of the most high in his children. Mm-hmm. Yes, and he is seen in uh, in Egypt as Pata. Yes. Okay. Now that's it. The second part is the kinship between the Kemetic mystery schools and Congo mystery schools. And of course, we have three of them, Lemba, Kimpa, Kimpasi, and Kimba. And mm-hmm. all three are also seen in Egypt. Egypt had a, yes. school, a divine mystery school where the priests were taught, the sacerdotal teachings. And they also had the martial schools where the military was trained 
Yes, yes. Yeah. But actually, actually, there were only one school of divine mystery, which is the Skimpasi. Uh, there were many schools of civil mysteries. Mm -hmm. The Lemba is the most known. Okay. You have also the Buelo. You have also the Quembale. You have many, uh, you have small, some of them that they cannot know. For example, I suppose that in the north of Angola, among the San Salvador and the Bazombo, there were a school of trade which has been lost. We know this through the practice to the practice of the trade, what was made by the, 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 the Angolan people who came first in Congo. They were saying, Kiankueno Mbalu, Kiluta Katula, Tikonda Yika, which means you have to be honest in business. If something is lacking, you must add. If something, is in excess you must take away now we, you and i know that business is not done this way in, no, in Europe. not according to so the this, European paradigm of business so these people are were doing business based on divine mystery mm -hmm. so we know from this that there were a school of trade among the bazombo which has been lost we don't have we don't have the only thing we, we that remain is that saying, and is also there the fact that the prayer which is used among the other Congo people is turned into into business business request among them. So those two things show that there were a school of trade there. So the the the, the lemma is the main one. Even the King Kimba, I think I don't I think that there were also other schools, military schools that we don't know. For example, the tech, the Teke people are supposed to be the military because they were the one who were supposed to 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 protect the border of the Congo Kingdom. Okay. So if, the, the teke. So if you have if you have to protect the border, you must be a military. Mm. So that there were a lot of a lot of military academies, a lot of civil academies that the Lemba and the Kimba are the most known. Mm, okay. Yes. Powerful. So in in in, uh, in Congo, we had the tradition of a high priest and yes. Saku Fenda. Saku Nefunda. Hmm? Yes, Saku Nefunda. So the high priest actually, uh, the king was assisted by the high priest, right? Mm -hmm. The high yeah. priest was like yeah. his first advisor. Yes. Is that same tradition seen in Egypt? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. You had a high priest. Why did Akhenaten say you have to open the, the eyes? Mm -hmm. They wanted to be at the same time the king and the high priest. Mm -hmm. There were also high priests in Egypt, as there were high priests among the Israelites, yeah. whom we have seen are also Egyptians. So this, the very same tradition was in ancient Egypt and was also in, 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 in among the Congo people, among all the Bantu people, you had high priests. Mm -hmm. And the, the Egyptian high priest, uh, they wore the leopard skin. And the same is seen with, uh, with the Congo priests and kings mm -hmm. who also clothed themselves in leopard skin. In? Leopard skin. Leopard. I, 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 I don't catch that. <laughs> The leopard skin, um, panther. It's the skin of an animal. Yes, Ngo. Uh, okay, 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 yes. And I have to add this. They were, they used also to carry the, um, uh, what do you call that? La queue. <laughs> La queue. Uh, the tail mm -hmm. of, uh, the, uh, of the bull. Of the bull. 
Yeah, which was a symbol of the authority. Symbol of authority. Yes. Hmm. That's that's <laughs> that's uh, that's something. So the leper skin, yes, of course, they have to sit to sit on the leper skin, leper skin, because sitting on the leper skin is a symbol also of authority. Of authority, yes. Hmm? And we, we, we in Kikong we say Vanda mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and they also wear the mpu, right? Yes. Made of leopard skin, which is yes, also yes. a symbol of authority. Yeah, the leper, the leper is the symbol of authority in Africa. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me see. Um, so what, what was the civil mystery school in Egypt? When someone went in a lemba, he will start with the divine mystery. That was the starting point, the basis. He will start with the divine mystery and then he will learn trade, medicine, whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. But he will start from the divine mystery. But when a Grecian student uh, went to Egypt, they will tell him, you have to start from the human mystery first. And he will spend all his time just learning the human mystery without being uh, able to study the divine mystery. So the human mystery, they were there. All those sciences that are not in, in, in the West, chemistry, mathematics, astronomy, all of that was learned, was taught in Egypt as human mystery, even medicine, trade, and so on. Mm -hmm. And we know that from the papyrus, with the papyrus, we know that we have mathematics formulas that were not there, trigonometry, chemistry, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So the same knowledge which are taught today were taught there as human, human civil mystery. Yeah. Now you, you talked about the 3,000 year cycle, yes, which was yes. well known amongst the ancient Egyptians, let's say, and the ancient ancestors, the 3,000 year cycle. Yeah, and that is uh, that you said that every 3,000 years, the time changes, uh, the, the mm -hmm. thoughts changes, there are, go from solar. There are, many, there are mainly two kinds of thinking. The solar thinking, which is based on the fact that reality is spiritual. Mm -hmm. Now you can we can prove that reality is spiritual, and we have also the lunar thinking, which is the thinking of the Western people, which is based on the assumption that reality is material. Now they cannot prove this, so both thinking take turns turn every three thousand years. So if you start from from the year minus minus. 4,000, which is the start of the Egyptian civilization. And you, you count 3,000 years, you arrive to the year minus 1,000. Mm -hmm. And the Egypt, the Egyptian became, the Egypt became, began to weaken. And minus 600, Egyptian, Minus 600 beyond that, Egypt is, Egypt is invaded. So from minus 1,000, if you apply again, apply again 3,000 year, years, you arrive to the year 2,000. And it is supposed, it is true that from the year 2,000, we have we are now in the solar phase. Africa must awake and become mm. become the, 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 the become the the, 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 the the leader in the thinking. And Africa is awakening because we have discovered the chemical cosmological argument. We have tools to prove that our science 
is valid. We have tools. To, we have a religion which is a science that we can explain. We, we, we can use to unite our people. So it is time for us to awake. And in fact, Africa is awaking. But you know, we, when you arise at, uh, at three, three o'clock, you can say, oh, it, it is not the morning. And, but when you, some other people will, will arise at six o'clock, some people are still asleep. But those who will arrive at 10 o'clock, they will re realize that every, every, the, the day has already begun before them. Mm -hmm. So it mean, what I mean here is that we don't all realize, realize the starting of the day the same way, at the same time. Mm -hmm. So for those who are initiated, those who are spiritually awake, they know that we are always in the in the the, the, the era of the of the or what is called the French vessel, the solar phase. Mm, yeah. For other people, for other people, it will come, but mm -hmm. it is already there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have already entered the the the, the season of transition. Eh? Yes, yes. The lunar thoughts to the solar thoughts. And you have you have seen with the event of the Ukraine, mm -hmm. they are now speaking of a new order, a new world order. So we are already there. We are already in the transition where the black people will awake and become their thinking will be the leading thinking in the world of science and technology. Mm -hmm. Yes, so for the solar thought of the African to be the leading, the leading way on which people think and, and do business and whatever, it means that Africa uh, must be on the top. Because right now we're not on the top. You cannot be we're a leader. We're not on the top. Yeah. We're not on the top because we have not yet used the tool that is given, the tools that are given to us. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have, to go back. we have to go back to our scientific religion. Mm -hmm. We have to use that scientific religion to defend our scientific paradigm and our technological paradigm. Mm -hmm. We have to do that. And we have the tool now, the tools now to do that. Which is the chemical cosmological argument which is the fact that the solar religion is an exact science. We have to use those tools. We don't have to, to, to sit there and worry for that time to come. It will not come that way. We have to work. Yeah, so all three mystery schools must be revived. Right? Yes, to teach yes, the but first to of all. The African and the Bantu, the, the Bakongo, the Bu, yeah so that we can um, operate in that exact science right? and change but, but the narrative. The, but the first thing is that we have to we have to reestablish first of all the divine mystery because this is the, the basis mm -hmm. we have to reestablish the divine mystery why i say this those ancestors who knew about surgi surgical interventions. They are still there. They cannot go higher if they don't transmit the knowledge. Mm. Mm. Okay. But in order for them to transmit their knowledge, people must be prepared. Mm. That's why I say we must reestablish the divine mystery. If we establish the divine mystery, we will have four people who will be receptive to them, to their inspiration, and they will transmit those knowledge back in order for them to go higher. So those ancestors who have the knowledge, they cannot go higher unless they transmit the knowledge to us? They like. can't. They can't because soul is immortal. Mm -hmm. That is good. 
the good cannot be lost. The immortality of the soul implies the immortality of good. So good cannot be lost. So what they knew is a good is an inheritance of, of the black people. It cannot be lost. It should be transmitted. But in order for them to transmit it, how people must be prepared. And the way to prepare them is by teaching them the divine mystery, by mm -hmm. reestablishing the divine mystery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we need the mystery school of uh, Kimpasi yes. all over yes. Africa. Yes. <clears throat> and yes, um, and in the diaspora, right? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. We need that. We need that. Mm -hmm. That is the key. That is the key of the spiritual renaissance and the scientific renaissance mm -hmm. and the political renaissance of Africa. All the renaissances are based on mm -hmm. the reestablishment of the divine mystery. So that is to say that the, the African yeah. must return to his own native original religion. Yes, of yeah. course, which is a scientific one, which is mm -hmm. an exact science, and which, which is a unifying element mm -hmm. because it is a science. Yes, so we must follow the way of Bukongo. Yeah, for us, yes, of course, yes, of course, yeah, and uh, because because Bukongo is the continuity of the scientific religion which was taught in ancient mm -hmm. Egypt. Exactly. Yes, so, Bukongo is our way to receive back into our possession mm -hmm. what was lost and to yeah. the mysteries which our ancestor kept hidden. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And which is still there waiting for us to awake. Which is waiting for us, yes. I, I, <laughs> yes. Mm -mm. My goodness. Now you said something <clears throat> that can be very shocking for some other peoples, but you said that Akhenaten uh, and the ancient Israelites and the Hebrews uh, all came from Egypt, of course, but Akhenaten is the one who created the Israelites. Is that correct? He didn't create. He didn't create the Israelites. Mm -hmm. The Israelites are the followers, the Egyptian followers of Akhenaten. They are the followers of Akhenaten. The yeah, the the, the, the followers of the Akhenaten are the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so Those those were Egyptian because Akhenaten, Akhenaten was living in Akhetaton, which is his town. And those people who were living there with him were the Israelites. So they were, ex they were expelled along with the mercenaries that came at their rescue. And the mercenaries are the Hebrew. So they were in the desert and Moses part of them in the desert. The Hebrew had the kingdom, which is, which is the kingdom of Judah. And the Israelites had also their kingdom, which is a separate kingdom. And mm -hmm. now the lost people are only the, the 12 tribes of Israel. Oh, so wait a minute. 12... So there's a dis distinction between the Israelites and the Hebrews. The yes, Hebrew? that's definitely what what that what Hebrew? I was put. Yes, the that, that what I was that what I was trying to put to, to explain. Mm -hmm. There is a difference between the Israelites and the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. The Israelites are the Egyptians, black people, the Bantu people. The Jews are the Exos who came to seize power in Egypt. But at the beginning, they were also black. The, 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 the change of the color came with the, the mingling with white people. So they were also black people. If you go in Kerala, in India, you will find two communities of Jews. 
the first community that, that arrived in Kerala, in India, they were black people, black Jews. They are there up to now. Many centuries later, many centuries later, another colony of white Jews arrived again in Kerala. And those two communities see the other as suspiciously because the, the, the black people don't admit that the white are Jews and the Jews don't admit that the white, the black are Jews, but the black people will first Jews to reach India. Mm -hmm. So yes. there is a difference between, between the Jews, the Hebrew, and the Israelites. The Israelites were the Egyptians. Okay. So the Bible talks about, of course, the two houses. The house of the Israelites and the house of... And the house of, of Judah. Yes. 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 And it says that in the last days, those two kingdoms, the house of the Israelites and the house of Judah, will once again unite as one. Yes, you, 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 you know, you know, when 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 the the the, the, the Arabs began to to spoil that area, many of those black Jews fled in North Africa, mm -hmm. and some of them went to civilize Egypt and Spain. No, 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 to civilize. Portugal and Spain, the, 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 the strength of, of the development of Spain and of Portugal came from the, the, the Moors, the Moors who were black people mm -hmm. and they were expelled there and came back again from Africa. Mm -hmm. But they are too different. They were at the, at the start. They were too different. Too different. Two different groups, but all coming from different Egypt. Different groups. Yes. Yes. Two different groups. President Senghor of um, of Senegal used to say that he's a descendant a descendant of the Jews, the Black Jews. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me see if I have. Um... Some other questions here. I think I have all my questions, at least those that I wrote down. Now we have uh, a sister with us, uh, Mother Bantu, I don't know if you're there. But do you have any questions for Dr. Luya Luca or a question? Yes, um, welcome, Dr. Luca Luca. I enjoy every time you come on um, Yaya Kephas's, um class. My question is, you said that the, the, there's, there's black and white um, Jews and Hebrews, are we, will we come together as one? No, I, I didn't catch the, the, the last part of, of the question. Um, there were uh, black, I said there were yeah. black Jews and white Jews, yes. But the last will part come, of the question. Will we come together as one eventually? Um, you know, if you take Israel, you know what they Israel, they acknowledge that the first Jews were the black people who, who, who are called the Sephardic Jews. And then there were some white people from the north, which are called the Khazar, mm -hmm. which, which adopted the Egyptian religion. So they are Egyptian, not by birth, but by, by conversion. conversion. And most of the white, the, the white Jews you have in Israel are descended from the Khazar because most of the Sephardic Jews will have been, have quitted and they have been expelled. They went to Portugal, Spain, and then they came back 
to the north of Africa. So should we come back together again? The black, yes. The white, no. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that's the black, exactly. Yes, we are. The black, yes, we are already together. But the white, no. Mm -hmm. They have, they have, they have, they, they are in the lunar epistemology. We are in the solar epistemology. So we will not be united in the same epistemology. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. That answered my question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so in addition to that, uh, Dr. Luca, um, so I remember the prophecy of uh, Kimbangu, Fumu Kimbangu, yeah, that he said that, that there will be a creation of a holy book, yeah, a sacred uh -huh. book for the black people only, because that book yeah. will contain the mysteries which is only given to the black people. All the black people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. actually the secrets, the mysteries of our ancient ancestors, uh, which yeah. we have read in scripture, uh, that it is given to us and our children only. In the words mm -hmm. of Jesus, the mysteries of the kingdom is given to you, not to every nation, yeah. but to you. Mm -hmm. yes. so, to the people. To the black people. Exactly. Ingeta. Uh, Sister w Fee William, do you have a question for Dr. Luya Luca? Uh, thank you, Nabi. Uh, this is actually Vita. It's just my name is not right on this device. Um, okay. Yeah, Matondo, uh, Professor, again, a very deep and um, some a little bit unsettling, I think, as uh, Nadi Kefa was saying, some of the information might be for, um, you know, for us. Um, but we're very grateful for all of your research and everything that you've been able to share. Um, one of the questions that I have, which I think is um, something that I've in discussion with others is a bit of a confusion or a struggle. And I think you've tried to address it, but I'm still sort of wondering how are we um, supposed to treat um, what comes from the kinetic science movement, if you, if you wish, um, in terms of how we reconcile that with the uh, Bukongo? Thank you. How are, we to, to, how are we going to treat that? We must know that the kinetic people are you and me. What comes from, from Egypt is, is essentially, the deepest things that come from Egypt is essentially the religion. And we have to know that that religion is an exact science. That's for me the key of the, of the matter, that the religion of ancient Egypt is an exact science. And that religion is found among the Congo people, the, and it is the Congo. So how to have to use it? First of all, we have to reinterpret the different trends of, uh, of uh, um, African traditional religion by using that tool. Let me here give you an example. I, I was not paying too much attention to Kudu. But later on, I realized that I was wrong. I had to study to understand the voodoo. Now, I mostly studied the Asian voodoo. And most people, when they think about the, the Asian voodoo, they see Benin. They don't see the Congo. And I tell them, you can't understand the theology of the voodoo of IT if you don't look in Congo. Let me explain this. We have seen through the Kemeti cosmological uh, argument that we have the most high God who is transcendent. We have the Balowas who are the, who are the, 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 the effective creators. And we have the creators of this universe, which is Mumba Loa, one of the Baloas. And we have Pinanta, who is, who is the, 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 the Logos, 
and the logos is symbolized as the conjunction of the male and the female. Now, if you take the theism of the voodoo of Haiti, you have Bondier, who is the transcendent most high God, who is not addressed in prayer. You have the Loas, exactly the same. Loas is the, rendi the Asian rendition of the Bak Loa. And you have the twin Marasa, who are who are who refers to the Christ. And people, many people will say, why we have to refer to the Christ? Is that, is that is Christianity? I say no. That was the contribution of the Congo people. You must first know that Marasa come from the Congo Mapasa, which means twin. And these twin are male and female. <clears throat> the conjunction of male and female express the logos. In fact, there is a twin marasa in each one of us. Because in the Congo culture, we call the female parts, the, 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 we, we call the left part the female part, and we call the right part the male part. So the moon tool, the human being, is composed of a female and male mm -hmm. childhood. So there is a twin marasa in each of us. So you can't understand this notion if you, if you don't read it from the point of view of the Congo culture. So you, so you see, we have to, we have to reread all our trends of religion through the scientific nature of how uh, 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 the original scientific nature of our religion. That is through the Bukongo, which is, which is the scientific as, uh, trend of African traditional religion. So this is the first point, rereading the different trends of traditional religion from the scientific point of view, which is the original nature of the religion of ancient Egypt. Second thing, we have to defend our science. We had science before the arrival of the white people. We have a science which was in advance of the science of the white people. For example, in order to govern France, you must necessarily have two technology, a technology of communication and a technology of locomotion. Without those two technologies, you can, you can have a centralized state. It is impossible. Now, the kingdom of God of Congo was a centralized state. So it means that the Congo people had a technology of communication and a technology of locomotion. But those two technologies are based on our epistemology, on the fact that reality is spiritual. So through the dreams, through those intuitions, through those prophecies, they, they, they will know what is going on in such that area instantly. That technology has been lost because we have been told that you have to justify your technology through the Western paradigm, which is impossible because the Western paradigm is a limited one. So we have to arise and teach ourselves that the way to defend our paradigm is through its scientificity by proving that its bases are demonstrable. We can prove <clears throat> that reality is spiritual. So that is this, the, the second point. Defending how defining how different trends scientifically, defending our science and technology by using by using the fact that the basis the basis is is that the truth that reality is spiritual and we can prove this 
and we have reestablished the divine mystery in all our culture. I think by doing this, we will bring the solar renaissance and we will bring the unity which is sought, which has been sought since the time of Web Du Bois. Yeah, so I hope that answers your question, uh, Fee. Yes, Mr. Now, I have a question from uh, Sister Naya. Her question is, as Africans, should we be living by the Kemetic African calendar? Question mark. From what I can see, the Gregorian calendar is also a major part of colonial colonialism, because the majority of the world follows a time and calendar system that was created by the Roman Empire. It also doesn't fall in line with African times of year with regard to sowing and harvesting, which was the basis of the line for our ancestors, whereas the Chinese still have their own calendar. So basically her question is, must we change our calendar? Calendar from going from Africa uh, from the my, calendar to African calendar. My answer is yes, yes. Uh, the Congo calendar had the Congo calendar had uh, a three day week, a three days week. Now in that calendar, my ancestor use one of the week for prayer. If I unite with them in that day, it brings to me power hmm. because they are praying and I'm praying with them at the same time. So we, if, if we use the Greek calendar, they are praying the fourth day, we are praying the seventh day, there is, there is a kind of Breakage there. So I definitely say yes. Hmm. We have to bring back, we have to align ourselves with that calendar. And I knew that that will happen. For the time being, I used, I used the, 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 the Roman calendar in order to count time. But when it counts, the, the fourth day, the days of my ancestor, I used to make special prayer that day. That is my way of aligning myself with that calendar. So the calendar, the, the Bukongo calendar has four days. For a week of four days. It is not only for the Bukongo. You find the same, the same week of four days among the Nigerian. Among the Nigerians. So, yeah, so I think it, it's all over Africa. So where is the seven day calendar based on? What was the foundation the, the seven, of the seven day calendar? The, the, seven day, the seven day calendar came from the Romans. Mm -hmm. It was not ours. It mm -hmm. was brought by, by the Portuguese. So what about the Sabbath day if there is no seven day calendar in the Bukongo? No, in the Bukongo there is no uh, there is there is no seven there is no Sabbath sent. I think this the Sabbath have, has is is a kind of duplicating, trying to those people were estranged from the true history by the influence of the Roman and the Greek. So they try to explain things from that calendar. But when they came here, remember in the village, we have, we have markets, our whole Ntona, Nkenge, Kandu, and uh, Ntona, Kenge, Kandu, and um, oh, I, I, the other are remaining. Those are the four days of the week among the Congo people. And each, each Clan use one of those days as a sacred day. So we didn't have the same day every person. My families used to, to, to pray on the Nkenge, which is the third day. All the family used the, 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 the fourth one, which is Ntona, 
some some other will use condo the kandu or the, the or the other one which is which is konzo so you have konzo kandu kengen sona hmm. my goodness and where can we find this <laughs> calendar if you ask the elder of your your clan your family they will tell you they know this it, and it is it is still it is still kept intact among the Congo people in the village when you you arrive at that day they don't they don't go to the to to the field they stay in the village they can do common public public work like like for example repairing the roads and things like that and they that they cannot go to hunt or go to the farm no they can do that up to today that is it is respected even in nigeria hmm. okay i read about it <clears throat> but my goodness there is so much that we don't know and so much that has been lost so much knowledge yeah. <laughs> and to restore all of this will take time and energy yes because we need to mm. re-educate ourselves and retrain our spirits and mind mm -hmm. so wow to really decolonize ourselves in, in in the way we think and the way we live in the way we do things right because there's so yes. much influence from the colonizers in our spirit in our soul mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. okay um i think i think um we're done. It uh, has been a great interview, a lot of um, very heavy, heavy information, heavy meat, fufu amakasi. So we have to, um, yeah, we have to keep it by this, I think. Dr. Luya Luca, I want to thank you once again for taking time. It's my pleasure. Yes, taking time in your busy schedule for this uh, interview. And Dr. Luya Luca is a scholar. He is an author. Yes, he has written many books. One of them being the Bukongo. Yes, for those who want to understand mm -hmm. everything he said, um, read this book. You can order it on Amazon. Yes, Bukongo from Dr. Luya Luca. And he is the founder eh, of the institution called Zila Lowa, eh, the Institute, the Scientific uh, Anamic. Hallelujah. I've read this book. I still love it. You know, I will read it once again because there's so much wealth of information, <laughs> knowledge in it. It's a very beautiful book. And so I will encourage you, Dr. Luca, continue to write. You have so much to share because we need to rediscover the mysteries and the secrets of our ancient, ancient ancestors as we have trans transitioned, yes? And we are in the season right now where the solar thought is being opened up to us and the, the, the spirits of the ancestors, the ancestral spirits are communicating with us, but we need to elevate our spirit, to elevate our consciousness, to meet them there where we can receive all those knowledge and revelations for us, hallelujah, to change the narrative, to change our life, and once again be the head and not the tail, as it is written in the book of Deuteronomy, and to receive the blessings of the fathers hallelujah so i thank you all for watching for being part of this great conversation with dr luya luca and myself and i hope to see you the next time for now i say may congo reign and uh, blessings of the ancestors be upon you i am nabi kefas matondo for watching ingeta Salama Benazulu.